Ryan Mabobas, absolute pleasure to have the great merger back with us. Absolute pleasure. Greetings. I know you Winston Bennett, I know you very, very well. Yeah. Yeah, I know your music, your acoustic view as well anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I've always been impressed by your stuff and been supporting you for years. Truly. Yes, yeah, so who's a brother here? Rastan Juma. Yeah? Respect. Yeah, I'm Rastan Juma, I'm a rhythm guitarist. Mm. Uh, Fabulous. Try a bit of singing as well. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 good, good. Oh, I've heard you before, I've heard your music before. I've recorded your music, it's going to be in the video anyway, so it's all good. So, Winston, yeah. you know, a few questions for you, because obviously there's a big band here, and the band yeah. are in this interview. All right. So we're going to put questions to you both, yeah? Okay. All right, when you look back on some of the gigs you've performed, which was the best? Uh, the Picnic at Blackbush, with Bob Dylan, John Armour Trade in Grand Park and the Rumour Lake, and ourselves, Eric Clapton and ourselves, yeah, and um, another one was um, the, the one we did at the Lyceum with Talking Heads mm. one Thursday night and um, the place was packed out and um, we did the same song, Prison of Your Love, and everybody was rocking and because we stop it abruptly at the end, it just stops, everybody was, they were caught in space, you know, mm. that was phenomenal, phenomenal, you know. I didn't know about that gig, but I know it the Bob Dylan gig. Oh yeah, yeah, the Bob Dylan gig, yeah, that was... Yeah, how many people were actually at that event? Uh, at well, least... <coughs> 250,000. Wow. Yeah. So well, that was that, well, that one of the largest numbers recorded, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And... So that's not like bigger than Bob Marley, any Bob Marley gigs and stuff? Yeah, right. some of them. Yeah? Yeah, but that, that, was, yeah. that was really passive. massive. Yeah, you know, it's... Mm. Um, Amazing. It was an experience, you know, because um, when we got on stage, and we looked out, all we could see was people, and about 250 yards down the road was two, two buildings, one on each side of, of sounds of, of PA equipment, you know, and, uh, and the, the earth was rocking, you know. <laughs> you can imagine. Yeah. So everyone here, that's all the people obviously at home watching this, I've just given you, I've set the scene for you guys of what band, this, how great this band was at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, so basically I want to know what made you reform? Oh, well, um, I, I think basically looking around, the, 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 um, what was happening in the world, and um, and um, because because we had always had a good reception for the, for the album, and we thought, well, you know, now is a good time. It's called Armageddon time, you know, and um, you know, there's these people playing around with guns and bombs and stuff, you know, and um, it's basically uh, it was a, it was, a, it was a, um, a prediction, you know, of, uh, what's the word? Um, you know, something that we saw coming in 1979. Oh, I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it yeah. was happening, it was happening now. So, um, mm. so we thought um, now we should uh, re, 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 re uh, issue this, this record, you know. So we, um, we got it um, digitally remastered mm. and uh, now it's available in vinyl and um, it's selling well. And the sound is fantastic. You know, you play it now; it sounds beautiful. It's because you know CDs they only sample a little bit of the, the music, you know. Mm -hmm. But this one, this one, you listen to it; it's it's fat, you know. It's beautiful, you know. So when you heard that, the vinyl's out there. Please do go out there, find it, purchase it. You know, give it to your friends as well. Let everyone hear the music. But you, but I've got two of you here. So who are the other members? Because obviously, was it some of the original members are they still here, or was, have you changed members of the band? Well. The, we, we, we had a change in 77 mm. um, with, a, with a guy called Barry Ford, he uh, left to go solo and um, the rest of us here, um, we, we, uh, we rehearsed for about six months and then uh, we went on the road and you know we, we played all over, we got um, Rastan Drummer and rhythm guitars and vocals, Tony Jose and vocals and keyboard, Farai on um, percussion, my Kojo Jose on, on drums. And over there we got um, Desmond and on, on bass. Brilliant, fantastic. So obviously we talked a little bit about what brought you guys back. Mm -hmm. But back then there was a real struggle in the black community. Was this the driving force of your music? Oh yeah, you see, because I mean, when we were growing up, um, you know, there weren't any newspapers that, that we could read, you know. It was all um, the status quo, you know. There, there was no black record radio stations. There was no, no black TV station. and. Um, you know, and what, what a lot of people didn't realize that was black people at the time were, were getting their news from the music and the, the music they listened to when they go to parties and stuff, you know. Mm. So, so it's like it was a contemporary thing, you know. Mm. I just have to listen to, to Biko, I like can see. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also was, uh, yeah. and all that was going on as well, wasn't it? So yeah, yeah, yeah. South Africa. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. 
But Bika, you know, that, that was that was our first single, you know, and um, and that was telling the story about Steve Bika and what was going on at the time because um, you know he was a student leader, mm -hmm. black student leader, and um, the police, uh, South African police, got him in a, in a in a high building and threw him out the window, you know, and killed him, you know, and. Um, uh, I wasn't okay on the actual facts or what actually happened. Yeah, well, well, I was driving down Dalil Road and uh, and I, I, saw, I had a Daily Mirror and there was a picture of him in his coffin, you know, and and I thought I had to write something about it, you know, because because they, they killed him and um, I think if you if you if somebody listened to uh, to Beaker, it's available online, you know, so um, and there's video there's video of it on YouTube, so you know people can 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 check it out, can check it out you know. Well, look, I've been in the studio here with you guys rehearsing, mm -hmm. and I love the tunes. I was in Prison of Your Love, mm -hmm. you know it's one of my favourites anyway, so mm -hmm. I actually love it. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask, if you had to categorise your sound, so I've got an idea what your sound is, but what would it be? What would you categorise your sound as? Um, in a nutshell, I would, I would say UK reggae, you know? UK, UK reggae, okay. Not, yeah. not rock fusion, not a bit of like what going on there? No? Well, yeah. we, we've all been influenced by by because mm -hmm. we grew up here and you know go to school and stuff and um, so some of it gets inside of you, you know. So mm -hmm. whatever whatever you're doing, it, a little bit of it comes out as well. So it's a mixture, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but jazz, but it's rock, but mm -hmm. rock, <laughs> rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's That's it all. Whatever you know? it is, people, yeah, man, it's, it's hot. Yeah. Well, it's the merger, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's a coming together, mm. different styles you guys, as well. You guys got this freshness. I mean, I, I, you know, I met Samande. Mm. You guys got a freshness like that. It's just like something about unique, it's authentic, but it's just like just something that's just breaking boundaries. And no matter what time, it, how long? It's like how long? Forty years, thirty years, <laughs> yeah, forty yeah. years. And it still feels so fresh. I mean, I can't <laughs> wait to literally come to the show and hear you there. Yeah, the thing is, in the audience, like jump into it. Well, the yeah. thing is, I mean, we we impressed Bob Dylan, you know, of all people, of you know, so um. I mean, he came down to the 100 Club, to, and we were playing there, you know, and he heard I've seen us. some videos. You guys look, seriously, like, you look, like, seriously awesome. Do you know, like, you know, Bob Marley style, with the dreadlocks, like, that yeah. Yeah, th those those are different different days. Different dreads back then. It was a black dreads. Yeah, black dreads, black dreads, yeah. Black dreads. yeah the, but we, you know, we have to be um, we have to be grateful to know that in this time, in twenty twenty three, you know, we, we we're able to come and play music again. You know, oh and, yeah, and, and, and it's a blessing. It's a blessing for us. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. so basically, what we want to do now is just go out and share it with everybody. You know, we rock them. You know, rock them and um, let them forget about their problems. You know, right. while they, while we're rocking. You know, right. Well, this. People always talk about the influences, who's influenced by who. You know, when you interview a band, they always want to know who do you kind of influence your music and so forth. So, who were your musical influences? Well, <coughs> well, for me personally, um, when I, um, I grew up listening to a lot of um, blues. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you ever heard of this um, guitarist called Bo Diddley. Oh yeah, yes, of course, yeah. yeah, he's a rhythm guitarist, mm. and all, I mean, all my friends were listening to Chuck Berry and thing. I was just clued and and boarded it because I don't know what he did and how he got that song that he got, and it, it was just it just blew my mind when mm. I heard him play, you know. So he had a big influence on me, you know, growing up. Right, what about you? Yeah, well, the thing is, when when I was like about thirteen, fourteen. Just just on the road from here in Brixton Road was a club called the Ram Jam Club. You know, it used to be a, open and uh, seven days a week, but on su Sundays you used to have a matinee for the youngsters. You know, mm. and boys and girls would come from Manchester, Birmingham, and, you know, three to six, and uh, we're going there. And um, they, they used to bring all the, all the, all the current music bands and groups. You know, Spencer Davis, um, uh, Georgia Fame, Georgia Fame. Um, Junior Washington and, and, yeah, and the Ram Jam yeah. Band, um, Peter Green, a fantastic guitarist, probably the best guitarist I've ever seen. Peter Green, I don't know if he's, not, he's with us anymore, but but he was great, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and um, Solomon <coughs> Burke, the soul, the soul as well. Martin Vandella, we used to get Ot everybody Otis, coming in there, you know. Otis Redding, and the Ram Jam Club, yeah, and um, yeah, that was. Ike and uh, Tina Turner. Wow. Yeah, all those people used to come true, man. I've met. Um, her PA, I actually interviewed her PA, Eddie Armani, told me a lot about Ike and, and Tina Turner. <laughs>
Can you share a story with the audience that you've never shared about your band? Mm. And it's not snitches get snitches. That's a bit of a pause, huh? <laughs> 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 uh, well, uh, well, they used to, they used to call me Stoner. Oh, because <laughs> I used to have two bags of weed. <laughs> two little bags of weed, one each side. And two guys. <laughs> I can definitely see that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't smoke anymore, you know. But, 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 but um, yeah, yeah, that was that was it, you know. I mean, oh, okay. I mean, if 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 um, you see, I I like to have, drink the tea because mm. I got a song called Ganja Tea as well, you know, mm. and um. But the thing is, if I I'm driving, so if I drink drink the tea and I drive and they give me the test. I'll be banned and pay, find two thousand pounds and stuff don't like say, that. Don't say that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, you can because I don't smoke and I don't, I don't drink the tea anymore. We, I'm, we believe you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> Brilliant. All right. So, how did you handle disagreements in your band? Because every band had disagreements. You know, song, everything else, whatever. Who writes this? Who does that? Who plays what? Whatever. How did you handle disagreements in your band? We don't really have that kind of, of a disagreement. We, wow. you know, we, we really work together. You know, quite That's why really we call merge in it. We're all we're all individuals, and we all you know, like come together. Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, That's brothers, beautiful. brothers, yeah. versions, you know. And that's the thing about bands. Bands, it's like if you get a good band, it's the best thing. It's better than anything, isn't it? Really? Oh, oh yeah, you definitely. Get to escape as well. The boys get together just to escape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like football. Uh, Okay, some people say rock is black or white. Does it matter what color rock is? Does it matter? Well, the, from uh, from the perspective of, uh, of music, it doesn't really matter. But the, the thing is, when you come back to justice, it's like you know, the black music has impressed, uh, has in, in, in infected all the other music that come along. You know, influence, I mean, influence, influence. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, um, so. Black music is the root, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of deserves its just desserts. Oh it's yeah, it's be recognised as uh, black music. Yeah. Uh, def definitely, yeah. it's, it's an art form, you know. Mm -hmm. That's um, that's 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 great. You know, mm -hmm. we just love it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so who would you say started rock music? Then? Rock music, or yeah, who would you say started rock music? Or yeah, we're talking about. Some people say rock is black or white. Doesn't matter. So we're talking about rock music. Who do you think started rock music? Uh, I guess. Um, Nat King Cole or somebody like yeah, that, isn't it? I mean, <clears throat> I mean, he was he was heavy out there because in his day, with all the racism that was going on, and he had his own show, you know, and stuff. And he was, um, you know, he smoked a lot and killed himself with lung cancer. But um, but he was out there, you know. And um, you have to read his story. <laughs> he went through a lot of things, you know. But his music was fantastic. And funny enough, his daughter came along and she she sang as well, and then she gone as well, you know. Yeah. So everyone, you guys check out that music, man, because obviously that can call great artists as well. Check him out and you can see mm -hmm. what Mr. Bennett's talking about. We were influenced by Elvis Presley as well, you know, because, because when, we were, when we were going to school, we didn't have access to, 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 to black music, you know. We all we heard on the radio was the white stuff, you know. Mm. And Elvis, Elvis is up there as well. But um, you know, yeah, he was influenced by black people. Yeah, yeah but yeah, because yeah, yeah, he copied, yeah. he copied, yeah. co and a black guy wrote most of his songs. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. yeah exactly. But we didn't know that, and still don't know that it's like the Lone Ranger, isn't it? We, do, we used to go to matinee on a Sunday morning, a Saturday morning, uh, about when it was about eleven, twelve, thirteen, and we used to watch the Lone Ranger rides again, you know. But the Lone Ranger in real life was a black man, you know. Mm. But we didn't know that. <laughs> you're, you're talking about whitewashing history, right? yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yes. Yeah, you know. Right. Okay. <coughs> okay. So, how did you write your songs? Well, 
in the case of Biko, I, I told you before, you know, I saw it, saw the picture of him in his coffin. That influenced me to write it, you know. Mm. So, but kind of, do you play from an instrument? Do you play from like beats? Do you write from like the rhythm? How does it come from? That was an idea, but in terms of other songs, how do you kind of put it together? I, it's, it's, it's a natural thing, you, you know, we, we, normally, normally you, if something impresses you that causes you to write some lyrics mm -hmm. and then you just sit down with the, with the instrument, the guitar, and you play around until you find something that fits there and get a melody for it mm -hmm. and, 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 and it fits around it like that, you know. Okay, and so <coughs> other members of the band kind of jump in and throw some stuff in for you. Yeah, so yeah, for, yeah well, so basically, everyone kind of contributes their own little flavour. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. Well, the yeah. thing, thing is, uh, as far as the writing is concerned, I mean, each individual write um, write a song and um, they bring it to the to the band. Mm. You know, cause in, in, ca in case of the song called Why, written by Tony and, and Mike. Um, uh, it's on the album, yeah, and uh, they they went and, re went and wrote that and brought it brought it back to the to the band and we played it, and then then there's um, Vision of Life, which um, which Tony and, and Dan Juma wrote, and uh, that was introduced to us and we we all got into it and we all added a little a little bit to it and um, arranged it, yeah, yeah. and you know. <laughs> Looking back, what do you feel was the band's most significant contribution to the reggae rock genre during the seventies and eighties? Well, we were playing during the, during the seventies. We were playing. We were playing for um, and universities and all over all over the, East, um, West Germany, um, France, uh, Spain, <coughs> Holland, Holland, Switzerland. Yeah. Austria, you know, we, 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 were, we were doing... Uh, proper touring, though, really. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, wow. in the early days, you know, we went as far as Morocco, you know, we spent six months in Morocco. That, that was another band, but anyway. Mm. And then um, six months in Madrid. So we, we, we were traveling all the time, you know. Amazing. Brilliant stuff. So what's the most exciting thing about getting back on stage again? Uh, well, mm, I think... Um, it would be like, you know, getting back together because uh, we haven't seen each other for, 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 for a long while. Mm. You know, and, you know, it's, it's good to, to get back the unit together and, and you know, see how the, the no audience will mm. accept the music, you know. Mm. That's, trust that's, me. yeah. Yeah, they will love it. And trust me, seeing Winston with his band again, I mean, he was incredible on his own when he's going out gigging every single week. Yeah. So now to have the band, it's just literally going to be unbelievable. You can't stop I him. Can't, I, can't, I can't imagine <laughs> what it's going to be like for you guys. And you just, and look at the style as well, look at the style. Yeah. I love it. So can you give some advice to, to up and coming talent? Yeah, get an instrument and learn to play and practice, <laughs> you know, because th this easy music they're making in computer, yeah, yeah. It, it, it doesn't last, you know, um, yeah. you, you know, because they can't reproduce it in a live situation, you know. <clears throat> yes, yeah, it's, it's very difficult because um, things have changed so much from, mm. you know, in the, when we were youths, you know, um, they do things totally different. 
yeah. you know, you know, they're doing a lot of um, sampling and, and all that. So it's really diff difficult to really, you know. But they got they got to get an instrument and learn to play and master it. You know, mm. that basically basically so that's I've been it. I've saying it for years. Yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> so well, anything, is anyone shout out? Do you want to give a shout yeah. out to anybody at all? Shout out to anyone, friends, family. Mm. Uh, 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 shout out to our oh, um, Basie Everdy. You know. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Uh, right. Uh, and also Ivan. Uh, yeah, Ivan's gone. He's, he was yeah. with us, but he's gone now. He's passed, you know. Oh, rest, in yeah. rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace. Mm. Yeah, um, I'd like to mention our distributor. Uh, his name is Winston, Studio 16, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah him as well. And, um, another Winston? <laughs> yeah, another Winston. Yeah, another Winston. Yeah, the the Jamaican Winston, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. And, um, who else? Yeah. And um, Lion Vibes in Brixton Market because they, they're always running out of the album, you know. Mm. Um, I checked them on Thursday, they'd run out, you know, they sold out. Mm. And they're, they're up on our website as well, you know. Mm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and, uh, <coughs> and, yeah. and my family, my, my, my daughter Naomi and um, my grandson Tushan and India and Mishak. And I got a brand new arm. And great granddaughter called Lila, uh, Nyla, and um, mm -hmm. and um, she's uh, was seven months old now. So, yeah, and all those all the, that family, you know. Yeah. Well, everyone, this is Merger, the great Merger, I'd say. You can't wait to see them live. So please, guys, support them. Go, would you follow all their Instagram links wherever they're on? Just follow it. Join the website. Support them on Cluster View. Just be, be involved. Thank you so much, Merger. You are amazing. Look forward to seeing you soon. Okay. One love. One love. Thank you.